Hey y'all. Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> or thanks for stopping by if it's your first time. This is my second book haul for the Greater Rochester Teen Book Festival. So you've heard me talk about it. You visited the website, you know all about it, but just in case you don't, the Greater Rochester Teen Book Festival is all virtual for 2021. We've got over 30 authors coming and one audiobook narrator. So I am trying to read or hope to read at least one book by each author who's going to be there. My goal is actually to do that before May 15th, which is when the festival is, but Back in 2018, I actually had a few that were left over after the festival, so I'll do my best. I have so many great books on my list to read, um, and so many book clubs and buddy reads and stuff that I've agreed to do that I'm really hoping I can get to the majority of the people on the TBF list. I have already read a few of them, I think at least nine maybe and I've read three uh just recently so um that video will be linked whenever it goes live and so this time last time in the last book haul there were some chunky beasts in there I'm currently working on the kingdom of souls by Rena Barron and there was another one that was kind of big and fat in that first haul that I haven't even started yet. Oh, The Gilded Ones. I hope that's my next one or after that because I might do a couple of really small ones to feel like I'm getting some movement in this challenge. And that's where some of the ones from this haul come in. So these are mostly from the library that I put in put on hold from other libraries in our library system that have come in. My hair is going to drive me bonkers. Sometimes I expect a lot from my bobby pins. <laughs> I suppose it's not their fault. They can't deliver all the time. Oh my gosh, I lost the earring. <laughs> Again. Anyways. Okay, so this one I actually already owned. I bought several in this series two years ago at the Children's Book Festival here in Rochester. Bruce Coville. Coville? Coville <laughs> comes to at least one of those every year I think. I was a volunteer at the Children's Book Festival when he was there most recently and heard him talk about his story writing process and give tips and things like that. He was so amazing to listen to. He created a story based on like people throwing out ideas. It was awesome. So this little tiny book hopefully will take no time at all. I believe it is middle grade. And it is about a boy named Jeremy who walks into a curiosity shop that was never there before. And I believe there is a dragon egg. He doesn't know it's a dragon egg. He takes it home. Did I read this already? Maybe I read this already. If I did, then I can check Bruce off of the list. But I have three other ones from this series that I know I haven't read. But... Maybe. I haven't read this yet. The next one is Kate Milford. So this book is Green Glass House. It is not the one that she's promoting. And that one, Jeremy Thatcher Dragon Hatcher for Bruce Coville, that's not the one he's promoting this year either. So these are just older books that I already owned or had. So this book was actually on my shelf at work. So I have a number of books there so if kids come in and they want to read or if they want to take a book home they can and so this one is about let's see it's winter time at green glass house the creaky smugglers inn is always quiet during the season and 12 year old milo the innkeeper's adopted son plans to spend his holidays relaxing but on the first icy night of vacation out of nowhere the guest bell rings then rings again and again. Soon, Milo's home is bursting with odd, secretive guests. 
each one bearing a strange story that is somehow connected to the rambling old house. As objects go missing and tempers flare, Milo and Medi, the cook's daughter, must decipher clues and untangle the web of deepening mysteries to discover the truth about Green Glass House and themselves. So that sounds pretty good. I also have to read a middle grade mystery as part of the Read Harder Challenge for 2021. So this one will certainly count for that. I actually think I have another one that will count for that challenge too. So that one is by Jen Colonita. Oh no, that's not the one. It's a dude. Yes, James Ponty. So another TBF guy come in 2021. Uh, this one is Dead City. This is book one. I believe that it is a series. This back says, I hate zombies. <laughs> well, sure. Who doesn't? I know that sounds prejudiced. I'm sure some zombies are really nice to kittens and love their parents. But it's been my experience that most are not the kind of people you want sending you friend requests. Ooh. Regular kids have enough to deal with between school, homework, extracurricular activities, and friends. But Molly Bigelow isn't a regular kid. Molly goes to the Metropolitan Institute of Science and Technology, a school full of really smart kids, or hangs out at the morgue where her mom, where her mom used to work. But Molly's learning about more than math and dead bodies. Molly is becoming an expert in zombies. Yeah, zombies. So I'm pretty sure this is a mystery, but maybe it isn't because that didn't sound very mysterious, did it? Hmm. Well, I can tell you hopefully in a couple of weeks if it was a mystery or not. Flunked by Jen Kalanita. Fairy Tale Reform School. That sounds exactly up my alley. I believe this one is also middle grade. Would you send a villain to do a hero's job? Gilly wouldn't call herself wicked, exactly. But when you have five little brothers and sisters and live in a rundown boot, you have to get creative to make ends meet. Gilly's a pretty good thief, if she does say so herself, until she gets caught. Gilly's sentenced to three months at Fairy Tale Reform School. When all of the teachers are former super scary villains like the Big Bag Wolf, the evil queen, and Cinderella's wicked stepmother. Harsh. But when she meets fellow students Jax and Kayla, she learns there's more to this school than its heroic mission. I am so looking forward to that. <laughs> and look at the cover. So cute. Ready for it. All right. A danger to herself and others. It wasn't my fault. Alyssa Scheinmel. I've never read anything by this author. Hmm. Hmm. Four walls, one window, no way to escape. Hannah knows there's been a mistake. She doesn't need to be institutionalized. What happened to her roommate at the summer program was an accident. As soon as the doctors and judge figure out that she isn't a danger to herself or others, she can go home to start her senior year. Those college applications aren't going to write themselves. Until then, she's determined to win over the staff and earn some privileges so she doesn't lose her mind to boredom. Then Lucy arrives. Lucy has her own baggage, and she's the perfect project to keep Hannah's focus off all she's missing at home. But Lucy may be the one person who can get Hannah to confront the secret she's avoiding and the dangerous games that landed her in confinement in the first place. So that is A Danger to Herself and Others by Alyssa Scheinmel. Sounds interesting. It reminds me, ugh, I don't, I'm not going to remember, the walls between, ugh, I forgot. But it was really good and I liked it. And I think it was a TBF book too. I will say this again, you'll hear me say it a million times. I have read some of my favorite books and found some of my favorite authors from doing this challenge every year. All right, the last one I'm gonna tell you about is really blinging off of that ring light. It's called Grasshopper Jungle by Andrew Smith. So this book, you may recall, 
if you're a psychopath <laughs> that I mentioned Grasshopper Jungle by Andrew Smith back in January when I was talking about my 12 friends 12 books challenge. So I believe it was my friend Chris who recommended this book. Coincidentally, unrelated to TBF because the authors hadn't even been announced, which is crazy. And he said the book was so good and he would have definitely recommended it to me and he said that it was and I quote holy shit so I'm excited to read this one and it counts for more than just the one challenge which I always like in the small town of Ealing Iowa Austin and his best friend Robbie have accidentally unleashed an unstoppable army an army of horny, hungry, six-foot-tall praying mantises that only want to do two things. This is the truth. This is history. It's the end of the world. And nobody knows anything about it. You know what I mean. Funny, intense, complex, and brave. Hmm. <laughs> Grasshopper Jungle brilliantly weaves together everything from testicle-dissolving genetically modified corn to the struggles of recession-era small-town America in this groundbreaking coming-of-age stunner. Well, that does sound like holy shit. <laughs> so I am... Oh, that makes these um, antenna. And a grasshopper face for the whole thing? I don't know. I'm really intrigued. I was already intrigued because of the recommendation. So now it can count for Rock TBF. So that's pretty cool. So that's six books, six authors of the 33 that are coming. 34 that are coming actually. Plus the audiobook author. Audiobook narrator. So... I'm going to finish The Kingdom of Souls. Um, the Gilded Ones is on my like n radar to come up soon. But I actually think probably Flunked and making sure that I've read Jeremy Thatcher, Dragon Hatcher, or one of the other books in the series um, are my very next things to do. Again, so that I can get some movement going because I could probably read both of these tomorrow and then feel pretty good about myself um, going into the week. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, friends. If you haven't registered for TBF yet, you should. But I will see you on the next one.